Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil Way. Today is episode 21 and we are on day 36 of flower. Day 36, it's starting to get interesting in here. I tell you what, when you open the front door to build the soil and you come in here now, there's no doubt that we have a 10 by 10 somewhere in here. It's, it's pretty loud. And I'm excited about some of the genetics that we've never run before. Really excited about the Bransons, but ideally today, I just wanna take you on a walkthrough, go through all the quadrants. We'll discuss what's going on, what I might be needing to do here soon. I did do a top dress on the earth boxes and I didn't document it. So I wanna show you about that and make sure that we cover it as the plants are really getting big. And I wanna encourage you to top dress the earth boxes whenever possible. So let's start in quadrant one. I'm gonna go through and talk about all the plants. So quadrant one, this is the papaya osmelon. And this one in particular is really interesting. I mean, it smells like melons and Skittles. It's really, it's really crazy. Normally the names never match up, but in this case it is very tropical, but not in like an orange or citrus way. It's sweet. It's got something special to it. I didn't take a clone of it. I could re-veg it. We have more seeds. Looks like it's gonna be a faster finisher. I really like the number of bud sites on it. I've got some purpling coming in now here on here for the first time, if you take a look. Hard to see in the GoPro, but there's purple coming in. A Couple of burnt tips in a couple spots. These five gallons are hard to balance. When you top dress heavy to keep up with it, it can kind of sometimes overdo it. I noticed that this one was having issues. The fan was kind of blowing on it, but what we found out is the fan was exacerbating it because I could not keep up with watering. And so I pegged it down to basically be that we were underwatering this container. And so I'm actually gonna fire the drip up right now. And I'm, I've been running the drip as my way to hand water because it's so slow. I can run the drip instead of hand watering. It's on its normal drip cycle, I haven't adjusted it. But instead of me really slowly watering, like it's so full in here, the water just spills out. So I've been using the drip system to slowly water for like 10 to 15 minutes until I get a little bit of runoff. And since I started doing that, all the plants over here have been super happy. They just need a lot of water, big plants. The lights are driving them hard. I also angled the light slightly. I had it just even, and this one was getting a little too much and these not enough. So that angle seemed to have helped just a little bit. Uh, back here, I haven't smelled the icicles. This is the icicles. Look at some pretty big buds. They're like golf ball shape, where I like the more spear shape here, but anytime I run a pack, out of all the seeds, there's usually some that stand out and some that aren't quite as loud. And so when you only run one, it may not be the winner right out the gate, but still good bud size, starting to get some purpling on here too. Uh, so we'll keep track of that as we go. This one is the, um, the one that's struggling the most, is also putting on the frost and has some pretty good odor. This is the Mountain Trop um, Cookies Back Cross. And it's got a few burnt leaves and stuff. We we're dealing with the overwatering, but I just wanna be transparent about all of it and let you know we're working with it. Let's go on to the next one. This is the Branson's Royal Revenge. This is the three by three no-till bed that we did a soil test on and man, it's. It's just looking really good. Get a, a close up kind of in here. You can see the bud structure, really fat calyxes. I really like seeing that, strong odors. Let's see, just strong. I really like the Bransons. So we'll keep an eye on that. I'll let you know how she goes and I'll take you to the next quadrant. So halitosis, just absolutely taking over these tents. They're a bigger stretcher. Probably gonna put out more yield because of the amount of stretch that it has on it. And in the last, I'd say in the last week, she's putting on so much odor. It's absolutely out of control. I'm really excited for the halitosis this time. And then the 30s have been pretty much autopilot. I didn't top dress yet or anything. Again, I probably will do one more top dress just to make sure they can ride out the long flower time that I want. But on the earth boxes, it's only a bag of soil in there. So I've already done my top dress. So over here, if you notice, there's a tiny bit more purpling coming in on like this stem. I don't want that to happen. A lot of times when you see it start to come in, that's because there's not enough nutrients or there's an issue there. All the others not quite so strong, maybe one branch back there. So yesterday I did a top dress to make sure that we have enough nutrition the whole way. And you can tell right here, I packed it on there and it's pretty cool. There's already worms wiggling around up in it, row of beetles on it, the moisture's nice. So I do feel like, oh, there's worms. I do feel like the, um, the top dress is gonna take very well for these plants. And all I did is I put some Coco castings and I dumped some like craft blend in it, a little bit of Karanja cake because I had an extra bag and I just threw it on top of the plants. And that's my top dress. You can tell I mounded it pretty well. Each one of the plants here, I did the same exact volume of top dress and I mounded it. You can see there's worms. This is not even a no-till. This is a freshie and we're getting worm action, which is really good. Roots coming through the side, row of beetles running around. And so this is the mound that I want that's gonna take us home to the finish. I don't think I'm gonna top dress again. That's a ton of food for one container. And now this should be able to ride out all nine, 10, 11 weeks of flowering, depending on how long we go. Last time we all harvested at the same time, I'm definitely, uh, these are gonna finish a little faster. So we're gonna stagger the harvest in here according to the plant's needs. And I encourage you to do the same thing. But there's just not that much going on as you've done all your work ahead of time. 
Uh, next thing that might have to happen is throw like a net over here just to make sure these don't start falling over. They're gonna get really heavy here eventually and that might happen. CO2 is running pretty good with the mushroom tent ducting in here. We've been able to keep the relative humidity under 60%. Usually it's under 50%. That's what we have it set to. Right now we've got the tent door open and we did some watering earlier, so it's a little bit higher. But uh, man, this one is kind of a standout for me as far as the odor. And I'm more like into the fuel, but I like to have a couple jars of each. And so all in all, I just wanted to give you a walkthrough, make sure we don't miss any documentation. I'm going to flip on the drip right now so we can see it working and let you know that's just how I've been watering these since I've already got it hooked up, it's so easy. So I'm just gonna go do that real quick. Check this out, here's the mushroom tent. It's going bonkers in here, these need to be harvested, but we're ducting the CO2 out of here into the other tent. And one of the things I'm gonna do right now is just grab the extension cord. This is where the water pump's hooked up into the timer. Well, I'm taking it off the timer right now and I'm gonna use it to, to water. So I'm just gonna plug it in and I'm just gonna let it run. So now I can hear the drips already fired. So I just went outside the tent and turned on the drip, just plugged it in instead of on the Niwa. That way it manually runs for as long as I want. Then I'm gonna plug it back into the timer so it runs its normal schedule. Right now it's impossible to overwater these. These are drinking more water than I can really put in there. So the slow watering really helps make sure I'm saturating it completely. If you take a look, the drippers are now running down here. And because it goes so slow, it takes probably 10, 15 minutes for there to be any water coming out the bottom. You can see this dripper's going a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna leverage that. And I'm just gonna let this slowly water, let it kind of fully go through the soil and connect. And when it starts dripping out the bottom, I'm gonna shut the pumps off and that will be the watering for the day. So since I started using the drip to really slowly water so I can fully saturate these with the maximum amount of water they can take, the plants are, are very happy. They're going through all the water with no issue now. They've been putting on a lot more weight. They've had turger and any of the leaves that we had that were starting to crinkle up from the fan and all the issues, since they've been getting enough water, they've stopped doing that and the plants are really responding well. So something to take note of, if you're in a small container and you got a big plant, it's probably not underwatering. Really, they need a lot of water when it's a big plant in a small container. And unfortunately, when you run a lot of water through it, if it's going to run off completely, it can start to take some of your nutrients out. And so that's why we were feeding. But right now, since they're slowing down and these ones are finishing a little faster, I think just adding the extra water will be good. Uh, by the time we do the next recording, I might do a feed. If I do, I'll let you know about it. But for right now, we're just doing plain water as they seem to be responding really well. I think that's it. Everything's going so well. I wish I had more to talk about, but this is why we do the build this all way. It got to the point where we set up all the work ahead of time. We did some trellising, we did some top dressing, we did the soil testing, and now we're just riding it. Like I walk in here, I just peek through my little window in the tent and it gets better and better every single day. It's exciting for all the employees to kind of take a peek and see how it's going. Like I mentioned, it's starting to smell in here pretty good. So even customers are noticing it now, which is exciting. I can't believe I get to do this in my business. Beyond that, if you've got questions, obviously ask us. This is a really good time for you to get some questions in here. So when you see this video come out, Post your questions, ask about anything because I generally just did a walkthrough and we wanna really encourage you to ask questions. I think in the last video, I also explained that, hey, if you've got a question that's not being answered, ask us multiple times. We're not gonna get offended. We really wanna make sure that if we see a frequency of a question coming up, we get to it. And it's times like these where we're getting to week five where I can see the next few weeks, six, seven, eight, like I'm literally just gonna be hanging out. Not much to do in here. They're not gonna be drinking quite as fast. I'm not gonna be needing to feed or top dress because they're gonna be finishing out. And so now I'm just doing quality control. I would encourage you, when you get to this point, you're in week five, things are really stacking, go around and look. See if there's any powdery mildew, see if there's any bugs or anything that you haven't noticed. I've done some really diligent inspecting. I don't see any issues in here. The last thing I wanna do is teach a new grower to do this, have them borrow from my confidence, and then just not check their room and find out that they had spider mites or powdery mildew or some weird thing in the back corner of their grow room. When you've never done this before, you don't know how quickly things can change and you may not see the signs. So a lot of times you'll see plant stress when something's happening and that might cue you in, but sometimes it doesn't happen just like that. And you need to be able to catch things really early on if it's a problem. So when you don't have much to do, use that extra time that you have to go around and do diligence. Maybe pull a few fan leaves that are blocking some buds. Take a look and feel the moisture of the containers. Dig around a little bit, make sure moisture is even all the way around. Get like I'll open this side of the tent and I'll get all the way around back here from the front. Just make sure there's no real lower branches that are getting like cannibalized underneath. No weird growth or anything that I need to pay attention to. And if there's not, then you just have more time even. And next time you do the same thing. Just, just like life, just because things are going well, you don't wanna to get too comfortable. When you get real comfortable, that's when shit gets weird. And when it comes to the grow room, out of your comfort zone means don't get too complacent. Don't just think because you had one good round, the next round's gonna go perfect. 
always be looking to preempt your problems and get ahead of them. So use your eyes, that's part of integrated pest management. It's not just pest sprays, it's not just cleaning the plants, it's also investigating, it's also using your intelligence to make sure that everything's on track. And I feel like we're doing a really good job right now. We got the lights dimmed down for the camera when they're really bright, it's not, it's not uh, quite as easy to see in here, but we're starting to get some color fade on some of these early ones. I do think they're gonna finish sooner. The Branton's is probably gonna finish sooner than the Halitosis, so I'd imagine this whole side will be harvested first, but there's a long way to go in the Branson still. It's got some GMO in it. I really do feel like it's gonna go a little bit longer. Hard to tell the difference between the two until we get deeper as far as time, but I'll take note as we go. And then like last time, what I'll do is I'll maybe take some trichome shots and we'll get a little bit more into the plant as far as harvest window and do a better job teaching about when to harvest. Last time we cut it all down at the same time. I think this time we're gonna involve some of the employees here to do some trimming to make sure that we get ahead of it faster and get the data to you right away as transparent as possible. So yeah, before I ramble on too much more, not much to do in here. And I think that that really is part of the build a soil way. Meaning when I was in hydro and I was growing and the plants got this big and it's week five, you're like, oh my God, if the pH swings or if the bucket has a, like a leak or if there's a clog, like literally your entire grow can just collapse in a day. And it gets scary with living soil. You're like, okay, nothing to do, zip up the tent. Inspect, do the things you're supposed to do, but for the most part, the build a soil away leaves you a lot of extra time when you've done, uh, when you've done the work ahead of time. So like I said, if you've got questions, ask them, subscribe, tell your friends. Appreciate you guys for following along. And until next time, I'll see you on the next episode.